Hi, I'm Dominic Picarda here for the April edition of Spread Bet Magazine, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the US NASDAQ 100 index, uh, home to some of the world's hottest technology and other uh, new economy companies. Now, Wall Street as a whole has been on fire for pretty much uh, the whole of 2013 or most of 2013 to date. The Dow Jones index has soared to new all-time highs. The S&P at the time uh, right now is not far off doing so. And I, and I see and I see this trend uh, continuing for now certainly. By contrast, the Nasdaq, as we can see, has been much less impressive uh, in, in 2013. It got off to a, a pretty a dramatic start to the year when we had this big gap up, which is a, a huge sign of strength in the market. But since then, the, uh, the progress has been much more muted. So while we have the Dow Jones ahead uh, some 13% from its lows of the 31st of December 2012, this index is only up by around 8% at its, at its highs. So the, the old economy Dow Jones, if you like, has, has outpaced the new economy NASDAQ. And this isn't really what I like to see in these situations. I, I'm pretty bullish at the moment on the outlook for Wall Street. I've been bullish for a number of months. And in these situations, I like to see the tech index, the NASDAQ, leading the way up higher. Because when you get the NASDAQ leading, it shows that there is a real bullish conviction on, beh on behalf of traders and investors that they're embracing the most, uh, the raciest uh, and, uh, and higher risk stocks in the market. And that's what you, you would expect to see in these situations. So uh, basically, some people are suggesting that because we've seen this much weaker performance on, be on behalf of the uh, on by the Nasdaq, this is a sign of, of weakness, uh, underlying weakness in the, in the market. And maybe the Nasdaq's uh, misfortunes um, could uh, could end up impacting the the other indices. So, is this really a, a warning that we're seeing here? This uh, this sort of performance, and I would actually say no, because the performance of the Nasdaq this year, which has this rather ugly, uh, spiky. Uh, quality to it is being unduly or, or, or heavily distorted by the woes of just one company. Um, uh, historically, or in recent years, its most important constituent, and of course, I'm talking about Apple, which has really, really been in the wars uh, just just recently. If we ca call up uh, Apple's chart, uh, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Since uh, the highs of uh, back in September, the all-time highs here, Apple has gone from around $700 a stock and ca collapsed down to a recent low of you know, $430 or, or thereabouts. And this has had a profound impact on the, the overall NASDAQ 100. Even after this fall, which has been really severe at a time when the index is, the NASDAQ has been gently rising, the Apple still makes up more than 12% of the, the overall NASDAQ. So what's bad for Apple is, is, is still ba is, is bad for NASDAQ. It, it has a drag on the index. At the height of, uh, of uh, its valuation last year, the NASDAQ was worth uh, was made up more than 20% of the index. Obviously, that's progressively fallen over this period. So how is the <coughs> Nasdaq doing if we if we strip out Apple? I mean, I think that's a, that, that gives a much clearer picture of, of the overall trend, even though this this represents uh, the economic reality. If you are trading the the Nasdaq, um, what I've done here, I've just knocked up a very simple chart where. I've got the blue line, which represents the Nasdaq's uh, performance uh, in, in as as it has been, and then this this is the uh, the sort of Nasdaq as it would have been without uh, as if 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 we take out Apple. So as you can see, the performance would have been much much better if uh, had it not been for Apple. So it's not that there is a general malaise in in technology stocks. It's uh, this is pretty much an Apple story. So there is there are there's plenty to be bullish about outside of uh, uh, that one company. The Nasdaq would be in pretty good shape. 
So, what is the outlook then for the for the for the actual Nasdaq index, which which of course does uh, include um, Apple, and we can't we can't ignore that reality. And I suppose if if you were bear, you would now argue that we've got some sort of big topping pattern tracing out here because you've got uh, what what a lot of people would identify as a head and shoulders uh, reversal pattern, and what the implications of this would be would if if the Nasdaq now collapses through this uh, this line uh, that I've drawn here, connecting these two previous lows, and you could get a down move of some 400 points uh, or so from that level. So somewhere into into this range, into the uh, where the lows of uh, 2011 or the uh, the middle of the range from 2011. And I suppose in a in a big sort of market pullback situation, that that's perfectly feasible. Uh, it's not really what I'm expecting uh, right now. I'm, I, I, I remain very bullish on the outlook for U.S. equities uh, for, for in the months ahead. Yes, I think we'll get a correction because the markets are clearly uh, quite stretched. Well, not the Nasdaq, but certainly the S&P and Dow. They've got to kind of overbought levels. But with all that liquidity being pumped into the system from the Fed, uh, I, I really want to be on the, the bullish side of this trade for now. Uh, for the moment, I would be I would focus my attention not on the Nasdaq, but on on the Dow Jones. That's got the sexiest chart of the lot at the moment. It's breaking to all new time highs. That's inherently bullish. Whereas uh, the NASDAQ, uh, I think if, if I'm right about the other two indices, it will get dragged higher even if, NAS, if, even if Apple does uh, continue to struggle. Sooner or later, though, I would expect a big, big snapback in Apple. I don't follow the fundamentals of this company very much, but I know it now to be uh, looking very cheap on a number of metrics. So sooner or later, you've got an overbought good value stock which is going to which is going to have a big bounce and that could be what is needed to drive this uh, up to new uh, bull market highs i see it going to 3000 and above when the turn comes so my message would be for the moment focus on on the, where the action is that's the dow jones and to a slightly lesser extent the s&p Keep an eye on what's happening in in in, uh, in the Nasdaq and specifically what's going on with Apple. When that thing begins to bounce, we're going to see this thing uh, play catch up in a big way, I believe.